So my name is Darlington Akogo. I'm the founder and executive director of Mino Health AI Labs. Um, so at Mino Health, what we basically have been up to is that we focus on developing AI and then data science solutions for healthcare with a focus across diagnostics, forecasts, and prognostics, uh, and even studying things like um, immunology studies and, and so forth. So we've been applying this to a number of conditions. So we have breast cancer, we have thoracic conditions. We'll get into a, a bit of them in a few slides later. But then um, one key thing we also do, apart from developing AI solution, is that we work with the United, State, uh, United Nations, so the ITU, this is the International Telecommunication Union, as well as World Health Organization, towards developing global standards and regulations to guide the space of AI in healthcare. So uh, I'm lucky enough to also be the lead of the topic group on AI for radiology, where together with a team of experts ac across the globe, we work on developing standards that would help in not only building AI system, but also testing them. So making sure they go to similar level of rigorous tests that um, other things like medicines, vaccines, and even uh, medical devices go through before they are approved in healthcare. So it will be appropriate to start from the point of defining what AI is, but then for our interest, we'll talk more of more talk more about machine learning. So machine learning is a type of AI. Generally, if you want to define AI, it's simply trying to give machines human-like abilities. And with machine learning, we are still trying to do that. The only difference is that we are focused on using statistical methods. So using statistical methods that are able to learn from data to then perform a certain task on their own. So basically, you have a lot of experts in this conference that have spoken a lot, a lot of expertise, different uh, domains. If we can collect data on them, we can have AI system learn from that data to then perform certain tasks. So that is basically the whole point of AI and then everything there is to know about it. <laughs> so practically, this is what it might sometimes look like. So. These are from some of the systems we've developed. We've applied AI to a number of conditions, like I mentioned. So sometimes we are dealing with medical images. So AI systems that are able to look at medical images and then detect uh, thoracic conditions. And then they're able to analyze it and tell you whether specific conditions like pneumonia, fibrosis, hernia are present, or they can look at mammograms and then tell you if a uh, patient has breast cancer or not. But then also you have for conditions like tuberculosis too as well. You can look at data. In this case, you can look at medical images, chest x-rays to be able to determine if there are any damages that are caused by tuberculosis. So this is actually a project we did somewhere last year. Uh, we had a hackathon that we ran uh, across Africa, and we had so many participants that developed AI solutions for this. One project we also had with uh, WACBIP, so Francis uh, organization, so the West African Center for Cell Biology of Infectious Pathogens, was that we developed AI systems that were able to then look at antibodies and cytokines to be able to differentiate between those who had low and then high immunity towards malaria. And the goal was that we wanted to see what sort of features, what sort of attributes are responsible for that difference. And this will better help us to be able to then develop responses in the form of safe vaccines towards uh, malaria. So this was one research we also did 2019, 2020. With the uh, Digital Diagnostics for African Network, my colleagues have spoken a lot about it, but we have one work package that is focused on data. And what we've been doing specifically with that work package is we've been looking at what are the potential and opportunities when it comes to data? What are the solutions that could be developed? 
especially when you're looking at things like molecular diagnostics with platforms like Leaseway. Uh, what are the pitfalls? What are the challenges? What are the necessary ethical and regulatory considerations that need to be put in place if we want to deploy this digital molecular diagnostic solutions? So to talk about one possible opportunity and solution is if you are able to digitize data from your test, if you are able to then have data, even if it's as simplistic as positive or negative, and then you have a timestamp on it and then you geotag it. So if you're able to tell exactly what the time you took that test uh, of a certain patient and then what, what is the location of that patient, you are able to then generate what is called time series data. So you're able to plot it to see the total number of cases within a population as we've seen with COVID-19, you're able to plot this across time. The interesting thing is that once you have that time series data, you can then do time series forecasting. So not only would you be able to accurately represent what is happening now, you can forecast what will happen a few days from now, a few weeks or a few months from now. So that is one of the interesting things that we are able to do in data science and then artificial intelligence. So there are a number of algorithms that we use to be able to then do this. So it looks something like this. You have the confirmed cases, which are in orange, and then you have the predicted cases of what things are going to look like for whichever infectious disease you're trying to then forecast. So apart from that, once you also have that data, you can truly get a map of how the uh, disease is then spreading. So we did this in the early days of COVID-19 in Africa, we mapped it and then we looked at the data. So for every single day since the first case was recorded in Africa, we're able to track it, uh, build this tracker and then see the changes over time across the different African countries. So I'm going to let this play for a few seconds. And the interesting thing about this approach is it's agnostic. So if you are looking at neglected tropical diseases, you can do this. If you're looking at uh, something like COVID-19 malaria, you can still use uh, most of the techniques that I've just described. Okay. Yeah. So yes, to just wrap up this, there are a lot of possibilities when it comes to data. Uh, this is a, applicable to was is applicable to neglected tropical diseases, malaria, so many conditions. So once you have that data, you can actually use it to automate and then develop digital diagnostic systems, or you can use that data to then develop multiple things when it comes to disease surveillance, modeling, and then even forecast what is going to happen. You can use that data to better understand immunology help you towards drug discovery, uh, vaccine development. The possibilities are endless. Due to shortage of time, I didn't want to go into ethics and then regulatory consideration, but it's important as much as the only analogy I'll probably use is Facebook. So we all realize now, especially that with the amount of data that a platform like Facebook has collected, it can become detrimental if things don't go accordingly. So just imagine the same thing for healthcare. It, it could be worse. So as you are digitizing a lot of processes and collecting data, realizing the power of that data and realizing that you need to do things uh, and ensure privacy, security, data protection is very, very essential as we keep digitizing and then heading towards this possible future of healthcare. Thank you. Um, yeah, so as my colleagues also did, I'm very happy to be part of the Digital Diagnostics for African Network, working with brilliant sci scientists across Africa and the UK, uh, across various institutions. It's been really exciting work. Um, thank you.